What's up everybody, Matt Moran here for another car review. This is of course the 2018 Tesla Model S P100D. So about the P100D, well, this is still basically the fastest production car you can buy, at least outside of the extremely expensive hypercars. And uh, it's just insane. You know, you look at this vehicle and it's such a sleeper. And I really love when vehicles aren't flashy with their performance. And this one uh, is even a little more low key than some other P100Ds can get. Uh, you know, so it's in this very uh, subtle gray color. You have these 19 inch wheels while 20s or 21s are available. Uh, but this one has the smaller wheels as well. So I mean, it really flies under the radar. Also, this being a 2018 model, it does have the newer front end, which I think is a nice improvement over the older one. And you have these sharper LED headlamps look very cool and uh, you know a little bit more of a flatter front bumper, but still looks very good. I just, I love how the grill is very tiny. Of course, a grill isn't necessary at all, but uh, it kind of gives a little more three-dimensional shape around the Tesla badge there. And just, I think it looks very sharp. I personally still think the Model S looks better than the Model 3. I like the way, you know, the proportions of this, it's a little sleeker um, you know like coming down to the sides here you have you know some of the cameras and sensors here in the fender with the nice little metal garnish around them even just you know like the side mirrors are sculpted so beautifully you have the door handles that uh, pop out and so they're flush with the vehicle and so it looks very futuristic but in a very subtle way very uh, mature in its looks and uh, up back it's even more mild in my opinion um, you know you just have a tiny little bit of a lip integrated into the rear hatch area there um, and just the badging there to let everyone know it is a p100d but other than that that um, you know just nice attractive tail lamps and uh, you know overall it's just again a very subtle vehicle uh, but this thing is absolutely insane I mean zero to 60 in two and a half seconds here for the p100d um, so I mean it will blow the doors off basically anything you will ever see on the streets um, but you would never guess it unless you knew what this thing could actually do Right, so for the interior here of the Model S, well, it is very futuristic and very cool. So anyway, first thing, sitting down in these seats, uh, you have these very supportive seats that are uh, made out of uh, this synthetic leather and uh, feel really good though, just like real leather and have really good bolstering too. Great torso support. I was actually surprised just how sporty these seats feel, but they're also super comfortable. I've already done about five hours on the highway in this vehicle as well, spent about 24 hours with it already. And these seats are super comfortable, no complaints whatsoever. They're heated and they're cooled here in the P100D. I think that's the only ones that get it are the top trims, unfortunately, to have that cooling. But the heating is also in all of them and uh, really great seats. Next is the steering wheel here, which I also love here in the Model S. Has a perfect nine and three grip, nice little 10, two notches, a little bit of a flat bottom, a nice thickness to it, but not overboard. Uh, just a few buttons here on it too. For such a high-tech vehicle to have so few buttons is really refreshing. Another thing that uh, you might appreciate compared to like a Model 3, like I did a Model 3 review a little while back and uh, that was cool and had a lot of unique Tesla stuff, but this has some familiar Mercedes switch gear in it and and so as uh, someone, my wife, Elise, is a Mercedes, so I'm very familiar with all this stuff here. So you have a Mercedes gear shifter, you have the Mercedes uh, turn signal stock with the wiper controls built into it, and also the cruise control here is also all from Mercedes, as is actually a few other things, like the window switches down here are from Mercedes, a few other things. Uh, so. There's some things that are familiar, but uh, it still feels very premium. And, uh, you know, I think that they've gone the right direction with the new Model 3 stuff, but I still like that this is a little more easy to get accustomed to coming out of a traditional car. One thing that is also a little more familiar is you have a normal set of gauges here. They're digital, but you at least have gauges in front of you because that's something, again, you don't get with the Model 3. And I personally like having gauges in front of me. And so that is one thing that I appreciate instead of having to look over to the center for my speed in the Model 3. So, Anyway, these gauges are great. Very simple though, uh, you know, as you sit, it doesn't really show you a whole lot, but as you're driving, it shows you more um, where you'll see the road lines and it'll be mapping out all the cars in real time around you. Uh, your digital speed read out there, of course, on the left there, if you're navigating, it will also show the map. Otherwise, it's just your PSI there, which is fine. Always good to know your tire pressure. Um, and then on the right-hand side is where you see your power gauge, and that's really what you can be looking at the most. Uh, and it'll actually chart out how your consumption is and how much, you know, power you're using, how much you're saving or gaining whenever you're deaccelerating and stuff and I think that's actually kind of fun to watch and so 
wonderfully simple though and I like that. Coming over you have this massive, uh, I think it's a 17 inch display and it is just huge. It is uh, so high resolution, so responsive. Uh, I mean the pinching and stuff I think is actually quicker than my iPhone. <laughs> it is so, so immediate with the way that that works. It works so well. Everything is very easy with swiping and it's very easy to navigate too. Now I did again have a little bit of practice in the Model 3 several months back but I mean even for newcomers this is very easy and straightforward. You have this you know little menu bar here in the very bottom and that'll bring up the main things you know so you'll see all of the driver controls and uh, car setup things there and uh, you know all are I like that the, even though this is a huge screen and that everything is touch screen there aren't any physical buttons here all the buttons on screen are large enough that you can touch them without being too distracted while you're driving. So that's good and it's also less cluttered than some of these newest screens that have massive displays in some other you know vehicles like the Ram with its 12 inch display. This I think has a little less going on and so it's a little easier to digest especially when you're driving and finding what you're looking for. And so then you know you have your audio set up here and so you know mostly it's just radio streaming. It does have Sirius XM which I'm surprised by because I didn't think that was something you were able to get in the Model 3, but nice you can get it here in the S. You can stream your phone. There's also Spotify now. There's karaoke, which you can uh, do karaoke here if you'd like as well. All kinds of fun stuff here in typical Tesla fashion. Another uh, typical Tesla thing when you press that T there, um, you'll have all the games you can bring up and it'll show you, uh, you know, just all the little quirky things. I covered that a little bit more in depth in my Model 3 video, but lots of fun stuff there and uh, great, you know, they have a little bit more of a whimsical approach here to the Tesla, which I actually really appreciate. They don't take themselves too seriously. Um, other things though, you do a few shortcuts here for calendar, camera, all that type of stuff. If you want to pull up your backup camera, for example, you have your climate controls, uh, you know, the uh, controls for the heated steering wheel and the uh, heated seats and cooled seats and stuff. And that's basically it. So, I mean, honestly, it's pretty easy and honestly like even like navigating is very easy like I just searched a random obscure park and I only got halfway through typing and I figured out like what I wanted to go to and it was very good and so you know, one of the main things this uh, screen does not have Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. And um, people coming out of traditional vehicles that are newer appreciate that. I personally, you know, I'm a big Waze user, so I like having Waze. So I have, you know, uh, all the alerts for traffic or for cops or for roadkill or whatever. Having all that type of stuff is nice. That is the only thing I miss from this screen. Otherwise, the navigation works great. No complaints whatsoever with that. Um, and I think if it had Waze built in, I wouldn't even miss the other CarPlay components like, you know, just just playing your iPod and stuff. You can do all that with your uh, Bluetooth streaming and stuff on here. So I don't really miss anything from CarPlay aside from Waze, that's it. Other things that are great are storage space here in the Tesla. Um, so that's one thing that it's pretty good for the most part. Although the one odd thing is you have nothing in the doors here, no pockets or anything. And that is one thing they did improve already with the Model 3. Um, so this is just an S specific thing really. Um, but kind of a bummer you have nothing in the doors, but it's okay because you have tons of space here. Right under the screen, you got this nice big pocket. You can fit several phones or whatever you want in there. And then you have this very nice, this one has this wood uh, finish on it. Um, and that covers the cup holder area. And I like that these, you can actually move them further down or further up and you know kind of configure that or pull them out all together if you don't want cu those cup holders uh, but it goes so far back you can see how far I can reach in there it is a super large space you can fit anything you could want in there honestly um, then you have this other little space here with a nice cover that actually has some more of this uh, like vinyl material on it and uh, feels pretty premium that's also where you'll find a normal 12 volt power outlet as well as two USB jacks so good to have those you also have the center armrest which is actually really softly padded and feels great and you can slide that back and that's where you'll find two other cup holders there and it is nice to have you know more than two cup holders here in the uh, front cabin of the vehicle but honestly I love this armrest so much I just have been kept leaving those covered and using these ones down here if I have any kind of you know drink in a bottle or something and also down in this area you also see like you have a padded knee area here everything feels very premium in here now obviously it's not as glamorous as you know an S class that's a hundred thousand bucks or something but you know it's simple but high quality and so it just depends on how much bling you want on your interior back seat in the uh, model s is also very good so even with the seat in its easy entry position which means it's basically pushed all the way back i still am being five foot nine can sit in that back seat and I still have about an inch of legroom to spare. Obviously once the seat is up further, then I have a ton of space. And so definitely a good amount of space back there. You also find two USB jacks back there, which is good to have. Uh, and also you'll see a 
know, beneath that, they, you can actually put your feet under there. There is no transmission tunnel, of course, or anything. So um, totally flat. And so you can actually fit three people comfortably back there very well. Now, the only downsides are there aren't any pockets in those doors and there isn't any kind of fold down center armrest. So you actually have no cup holders there for the back seat. You do have air vents, that is one nice thing you get, but so that is kind of strange. And so I guess, you know, having these two cup holders up front here, um, I would, uh, I just basically would say that these two cup holders here in this higher up area are just basically going to be used for the back seat passengers. You can hold their drinks and hand them back to them, I guess, whenever they need stuff. So that's kind of a weird oversight. And that's something they did again, fix with the Model 3, where you do have a full down center armrest with cup holders. And uh, so that is better, um, but just kind of an odd exclusion, especially for a vehicle that's supposed to be like a five series and s-class competitor to have a back seat with no cup holder is kind of strange um but otherwise like i said still a very roomy and great back seat and you have a great view there with that moonroof cargo space is also fantastic here in the model s of course and so first off we'll start in the back the back you have a nice large hatch area which is a great design and um, so it's a very long and a very wide space a little bit of a cubby there off to the left and that alone if that was all it was would be fantastic but then you can open up beneath the floor and you have a very deep and also very wide space there as well you can fit like a probably a full-size duffel bag underneath there and um, so a ton of space and again if that was all you had fantastic but then you also have the front, uh, the front trunk, and so you pop that open, and it's not as big as you maybe were expecting it to be, but it does have enough room, again, for another duffel bag or maybe a yoga mat or something like that. You can put that kind of stuff in the front there. And so nice to have some additional space there. Uh, obviously, it'd be nice if you had more, um, considering there are some, like, supercars and stuff that have bigger frunks, but I think, you know, for the uh, all-wheel drive capability and the electric motors and all that kind of stuff, they kind of had to cut into that a little bit, but still great to have that extra extra bonus space and uh, so no complaints there one other little thing I want to mention here before we hit the road is the stereo system here now again I've been driving this vehicle for several hours already and although this isn't a branded stereo you know so you might not think it's super high-end or anything it sounds fantastic tons of bass but even beyond that it's just very crisp clear audio honestly it's one of the better systems I've heard in recent memory and so I wasn't expecting that that was kind of a surprise because you know these days we're so used to branded stereos and having a Harman Kardon or a Bose or um, you know something like that Bowers and Wilkins anything like that to kind of like oh wow that's a nice stereo but this doesn't give you any cues that it is an amazing stereo but if you try it out it actually sounds very very good all right so start and go for a drive the Model S here has this very cool car shaped key and uh, see if I can get it to focus here there we go uh, very cool key though. So you can actually uh, hit the top to lock and unlock it, hit the back to hit the hatch, or hit the front to open up the front. So very cool and uh, has Model S there on the back. A very nice key and I actually like that you have a real key here because with the Model 3 you don't anymore. You just have a little card or your phone. And I like having a key fob still, but of course it's a keyless access, keyless entry, push button start, all that kind of stuff. So I'm in the easy entry seating position. So I just put my foot on the brake and it comes to life, puts everything into my settings, and you just start off. All right, setting off here in the Tesla Model S. So, uh, a lot of things to take in. I think the first thing is the throttle. So, um, you can change the throttle so the regenerative braking is either low or standard. It's on standard right now, which means basically in a gasoline car, you take your foot off the gas and you know, it like, it slows down a little bit, but this it actually starts like braking. And it'll actually turn on the brake lights um, whenever you're slowing down sometimes just because it has that regenerative braking and it's pretty strong. But um, yeah, so anyway, we got a, a couple of corners here. I first want to test out the handling because this vehicle weighs almost 5,000 pounds. 49.15, I think is the exact weight, but it is so flat and that's one thing you know like I said I've been driving this vehicle for about 36 hours now and um, it is just so flat in its handling and everything about this vehicle it does everything even better than I was expecting it to not that I had low expectations I heard obviously the very low center of gravity and stuff but you know a vehicle that weighs basically almost as much as a full-size pickup truck um, I just was a little iffy but you know it handles itself so well um, and I also like so the steering is in its standard mode now you can't have a sport mode and a comfort mode but I really just love the standard mode it's light but has actually good feeling to it it's not as communicative as you know like a car from 10 years ago or something but it does have really good feel and I just again I really like the weight it feels very uh, light on its feet as far as it just wants to change direction 
um, very quickly, and, but yet you still have a very solid ride. And it feels like you're rolling around in a bank vault with just how solid everything feels. Throttle response also with the electric, you have immediate response. So um, you just lean into it a little bit and it takes off on you, which is awesome. So anyway, um, the main thing here is the crazy acceleration of the P100D. So we're gonna try that out. I'm gonna put this up into the ludicrous plus mode and you gotta go max battery power. And so it's a whole long list of stuff, but um, I'm sure I'm not doing launch control right. I'm just going to be accelerating on a normal back road like I usually do, not doing a dedicated launch here. But I just wanna see how this does. So I will come to a stop because that's the most impressive thing with these and go from there. All right, guys, here we go. Sorry, that was probably really obnoxious. That was just, whoo, that was crazy. Whew. Two and a half seconds zero to 60. Um, and it's pretty repeatable considering it's electric and there isn't anything to do. There's no shifting, it's just immediate. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, probably the fastest I've ever accelerated in a car. My mind's kind of exploding right now. Wow. Uh, yeah, it is insanely fast. Um, so it's like what 680 horsepower i think 780 pound feet of torque something like that um it is wild uh i'm kind of speechless <laughs> i don't even know what else to say we'll do a rolling acceleration here just for kicks oh man this thing takes off it is insane yes this thing it's <laughs> It could smoke just about basically anything, anything. I mean, two and a half seconds zero to 60. And that was actually, Motor Trend, I think, got like a 2.28 seconds zero to 60 in this. So realistically, you're smoking basically everything in existence on the street. And if you happen to find yourself next to some of the fastest cars in the world, you'll at least keep up, uh, at least until a certain amount of time. Now, the thing with these electric motors, they're very impressive from a stop, but then once you get up to some higher speeds, it does kind of lose out, and that's where then the normal gasoline-powered stuff has the longer legs to really get a propel those to over 200 miles an hour. This thing, um, you know, I think it's capped at like 163 or something here. Um, and so, yeah, but it's very fast. And it's the great thing with electric motors is, you know, you still get very impressive performance even with the lower versions of the Model S. So you don't have to go to the top end P100D or now what they just call the performance version um, to get this insane performance. Even the standard ones, you know, have over 500 horsepower. Um, it'll do zero to 60 in low four seconds um, in those as well. So very, very fast, but this thing is in a whole nother ballpark. And I just love that I'm doing all of this with such a sleeper profile. I got just 19 inch wheels you know normal sidewalls nothing shouty about this vehicle whatsoever and then you just floor it oh, and you go into warp speed immediate speed it is insane 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 Whew. <laughs> man oh man it actually like almost blurs your vision with how fast it goes it feels like you know any of those roller coasters that launch you from a stop it's basically that but you're in control you're not just along for the ride um and so that's that's kind of more exciting uh, but it also is, it's a little less shocking sometimes than like a roller coaster for example it's insane i'm comparing this to a roller coaster but that's what i'm comparing it to um and so that's why you see all the videos of passengers being very shocked driving around in these things because they uh whenever you're not expecting it it's got to be even more mind-blowing uh, but even as a driver it's just like hang on and uh focus it's basically all you got to do but it's very seamless and you know it's just it's impressive so anyway i'm going to quit blabbering about the speed it's mind-blowing you probably already knew that but now you know in case you're wondering but you know honestly you know like most of the time i've been driving this uh, that was actually my first genuine acceleration i managed to go 36 hours without flooring this thing <laughs> but i've actually been just driving around in sport mode most of the time for the acceleration which is just one above chill so that sports like actually the normal mode and in that mode um it's still it's very punchy feels great and you know someone who daily drives a 480 horsepower mustang gt this feels very much you know right in line with that although you have instant torque in this versus with any gasoline engine you gotta row the gears and get the engine up to speed and all that kind of stuff this there's no such thing so it's it's really nice in so many ways it's so nice you know accelerating from a stop i mean you will never lose a stoplight drag race as far as you know like there was one time earlier today where it was two lanes merged into one uh i was next to another car around 
red light and it wasn't even a contest. Everyone is going to accelerate slower than you whenever you're in an electric car, basically, uh, unless you're really trying to eke out your range. The speed is insane, but if you actually want to drive this thing, you know, a long distance, forget about doing any of the heavy accelerating because um, that can drain that battery pretty quickly. Um, but yeah, so I've been just cruising around in sport mode, but it's great, you know, even in sport mode, um, you know, like passing power on the highway, it's effortless. It's basically point and shoot, like you want to be there, you hit the gas and you're there and that's it. Um, so effortless in that area and it's so effortless as far as a road trip vehicle as well obviously there's been so much press over the autopilot system and i was really curious to try it because i got to try it last year in sofian's model 3 but that was kind of just in traffic and low speed stuff and so i actually kind of did like a five hour round trip road trip here in this vehicle last night and i uh, wanted to really try out the autopilot and i didn't do the navigate on autopilot i just wanted to focus on how it did the standard autopilot stuff and that includes the lane change changes that it was doing and all that stuff it does very well so it does do lane changes a little slower than a human usually does so uh, I hit the thing you know that I put the turn signal on and then you know it get, I'd say about three seconds of one two three then it starts going over and it takes its time it's not a quick lane change it takes its time and then does it it's a very safe feeling and whenever since you're not in 100% control obviously you can be if you want but it, since it's doing it itself it's kind of comforting that it's doing it a little slower but if you're trying to really slice and dice in traffic you're not going to be able to use autopilot you know um, but if you're on a relaxed you know trip and there aren't a lot of cars around and stuff it does uh, it is kind of nice to just hit the turn signal you you know it's always mapping out your blind spots and stuff so it knows whenever it's clear and just does its own thing um, and the adaptive cruise control also works very well on these so I use that for most of the time and um, it works well it works about as well as most um, most of the you know I guess advanced adaptive cruise control Control systems you see in other cars that have the steering assist. This does it just about as well as all of those. Um, I still am not in love with all the lane keep assist systems and stuff because they always want to place me dead center in my lane, which is fine. But usually when I'm driving, I like being a little closer to the shoulder just to give me a little more forgiveness in case the car next to me swerves or does something stupid. Um, so it, it it's a, always a little bit uncomfortable for me to you know be where the car wants to be in the lane, but you know you get used to it after a while and it's not a big deal. There was a couple of times where it randomly would slow down on me and there was one time where it did it because the speed limit dropped uh, but there's one other time where it was just wide open and it actually started slowing down a lot like as if it saw something and there was nothing in front of me so I'm not sure you know it still seems to get a little spooked every once in a while it's definitely not perfect even uh, Tesla recognizes it's still all in beta and all that kind of stuff as a disclaimer it certainly does not drive itself it is certainly not even close to that and I think it's actually not the most advanced system out there still I personally like Cadillac Super Cruise better. I got to do a road trip in that last year, and that is really nice because it is truly hands-free and it has driver monitoring tech to make sure you're paying attention. But because it knows you're paying attention in the Cadillac, you can actually have your hands just resting on your lap, you know, in case you need to do anything. But otherwise, you know, you can just leave it on your lap. And you might not think that's a big deal because in this car, you know, it still forces you to have your hand on the wheel. Um, but the difference between just even resting my hand on the bottom of the wheel and just being along for the ride versus having my hands doing nothing, just laying on my lap, is actually a big difference. And if you actually did a road trip in, in a Super Cruise Cadillac, I think, at least I really noticed that and appreciate that. And I was like, you guys are really lazy first world problems. But whenever you experience not having to steer at all on your road trip, that is really a nice luxury, and I'm sure Tesla will get there very soon. Obviously, they have already have the tech in place. It's just a matter of doing it responsibly and monitoring drivers so they don't abuse it and hop in the back seat like they were whenever they first launched this system. During my road trip here in the uh, Model S last night, um, one interesting thing I did notice is, of course, the range of this. So the P100D is rated at 315 miles of range, um, and that number is a little misleading because there's a bunch of caveats to that with these batteries. So, um, you know, you're not really supposed to charge them over 90% because that's not great for the battery. You can do it if you really are going to need the most range possible, um, but it's not something you want to do on a regular basis. And then the car also doesn't like it when you get below 20% battery life either. Okay. So that's, you know, around like maybe 40 or 50 miles of range uh, whenever you get to that point and it's like starts worrying you and, you know, freaking out about how it's low in battery. So um, realistically, when you factor in that you can't use that last 40 miles, 
miles really or at least you shouldn't I guess and then you can't really use the top end of that range you can really only charge it to about maybe 280 miles or so um, and then you lose out on 40 so I'd say realistically a vehicle with 315 miles of range you can actually probably do about 240 miles of driving um, in daily normal use if you want the battery to be healthy so those are all the caveats so you're really looking at 240 miles of range and so you're you know on a road trip even like you know I was doing two and a half hours each way and so I was able to get to where I wanted to go two and a half hours without charging but then on the way way home I did have to charge and the whole supercharging experience is very seamless and easy it's uh, cool you just pull up you know grab the thing plug it in and uh, you have about 200 miles of range within 30 minutes or so uh, depends on the charging rate of the supercharger you're at and stuff um, so sometimes it's gonna be faster sometimes it's slower I think it also kind of depends on how many people are also charging and stuff so your experience will vary but um, you know we hung out and there was a Walgreens right next to it which worked out well so kind of just hung out there and uh, you know got about 200 miles of range or so um, and did that and it was a little over 30 minutes I think uh, but you know not not too inconvenient again if there's something nearby most people just kind of park go in and get a coffee or do something and then that's it um, and so it's pretty seamless and also because you have all these games and stuff you can play you can even just hang out in the car and I, a lot of the times when I've I've supercharged twice now last night and this morning and both times there's often people just hanging out in their Teslas just playing around on the screen or doing whatever and they just sit there and wait and um, again if you're not in a hurry it's not a big deal but um, it was a little inconvenient I will say for me because we did all the road tripping last night and then you know today I was doing a bunch of driving as well so I needed more range and so um, you know it was definitely less convenient than a gasoline engine in that limited circumstance but the idea behind these is obviously you have a charger at your house I'm currently traveling so I'm living out of a hotel as I'm doing this review so I didn't have that luxury and the hotel didn't have a charger built in but that's another thing you know even if you had a charger at your hotel you'd be fine but living with one of these you own one of these obviously you're gonna leave every day with a fully charged battery you'll have your you know 240 realistic miles of range you do everything you need to do and uh, you know for most people you will never have an issue with battery life and even when you go on road trips Tesla has hands down the best supercharger or the best charging network currently the fastest charge times you know that, that are available in a widespread fashion and so you know it makes uh, for easier road tripping it still is not as easy as a gasoline car but it's not as much of an inconvenience as it used to be I think and that's the big takeaway yeah the handling in this never ceases to amaze me I mean you know even on these back roads here with 55 mile per hour speed limits where I'm going around corners at you know nearly highway speeds it still is so flat and planted and considering though know, the tires on this aren't crazy either they're Michelin Pilot Sport 3s um, which is a summer tire um, so you have pretty good grip uh, but it's still not the newest Michelins or anything like that um, but it's just so flat and really I think like 245 wide so we're not talking about some super wide sticky tires or anything but it still is just so flat no you know issues with grip or anything but we'll do another acceleration here this time just in sport mode <laughs> there I got a little bit of wheel spin coming out of that corner and then <laughs> still takes off very very well so uh, yeah even in sport mode you will have you know nearly supercar levels of acceleration already anyway um, even if you don't want to go up into those ludicrous modes all the time but yeah the more and more that I drive this uh, the more I am just so impressed with this vehicle I'm impressed with the handling I'm impressed with the acceleration I'm impressed with how quickly I've adjusted to the regenerative braking and how much I enjoy that you know using the brake pedal less it's actually really satisfying as well everything about this vehicle it is so satisfying and it's satisfying in a slightly different way than a normal car obviously it's totally silent I mean you get a little whir a little faint you know whir of an electric motor but that is it I mean otherwise all you're hearing is wind noise and you know sometimes road noise but it's a very refined vehicle too on the highway so it's a very smooth comfortable ride everything is so it's very polished too it's very very much feels like a you know full-size luxury sedan in its ride and stuff but then it just goes around corners so flatly and effortlessly and with such confidence everything about this it really is mind-blowing not just the acceleration but everything and I know I'm late to the game here the model S has been out for you know what seven years now or whatever so this is old news for a lot of people one thing I will say though is that I'm used to still letting off of the gas a little bit and just coasting and I still you know have to adjust my foot to not let off so much because I'll find myself being like okay I'm at the speed limit and then I kind of 
you know, will relax my foot a tiny bit or something. I'm just like, oh, I'm just cruising along and driving the way I would normally drive in a gas car. Uh, and then I'm like, oh wait, now I'm going under the speed limit. So it still takes a little while for your brain to adjust, but I'm sure the muscle memory catches up pretty quickly. Whenever you do actually use the brakes though, and you don't just use the regenerative braking, whenever you do actually put your foot on the brake pedal, they feel very good too. They're very responsive brakes, very consistent in their feel. Uh, you don't feel like there's any regeneration going on or any kind of weird stuff. Um, you know, you just uh, lean into them and they feel very, very good. Very strong brakes too that seem up to the task of slowing down a vehicle that's nearly 5,000 pounds and is oftentimes going very, very quickly. So um, yeah, good job on the brakes too. You also have this air suspension and that's great because you can also raise and lower it for making sure you don't scrape the front end whenever you're pulling into steep roads or driveways or things like that. Um, and the air suspension does a really good job of you know soaking up all the imperfections on the road and stuff. And uh, again, feels very refined and right in line with other vehicles this competes against. The Model 3 is a little bit smaller, so it's easier to park and things like that as well, but I still think there is a little more polish in this. The ride in the 3 is still very smooth, but I think this still has a little more of a layer of refinement than you get in the 3. I like both of them. They're both fantastic cars, um, but if it were my money, even though I'm partial to the S, I'd probably just get a 3. Have very impressive performance with the uh, performance version of the Model 3. Um, it's going to be, you know, not quite as fast as this, but close enough. It's still going to knock your socks off every time you floor it. You know, that's, I think that's going to be the better buy as far as the value standpoint goes. Um, but yeah, so that's enough of my rambling. It's just that these vehicles just fascinate me so much. You know, I still prefer having an engine sound. I still like the extra work, but I can see how for a daily commute or something, this could be really, really cool, and I think it definitely has a lot of merit, especially if you can charge from home, like I said, and if you have access to a lot of superchargers for any longer drives you would need to do and things like that. I think this makes a lot of sense, and uh, I love electric cars. I think they're super fun, super exciting, um, both from Tesla and from other manufacturers, and I think it's going to be a very exciting future in just a different way. But. Uh, and these things are fantastic and if you have any doubts about electric cars being uh, exciting just go for a ride in one of these and uh, let me know what you think but anyway that's about all my thoughts here in the Model S uh, thank you guys very much for watching this video let me know your thoughts on the Model S in the comments below and I'll see you guys on the next one take care